I have always preferred living alone. No wife, no roommates, and most importantly, no kids. I wanted a cat or dog, but still hadn't gotten over the death of my last one. That all changed one day, when I was taking an evening walk, and, in a dark alleyway, I saw a crying child. I looked around, hoping this wasn't some kind of trap, and finally approached her. Hey there, kiddo. What's the matter? She stopped crying and looked up at me. I... I don't know what to do. I don't want to go home. They're all mean to me. But I'm scared and hungry. I offered to take her across the street to the gas station to get a sandwich. To which, she stopped crying and silently joined my side. Still sobbing and scared. After getting a sandwich that she enthusiastically devoured, I took her to the police station. She said her name was Lilith. She was ten years old and, upon research, the state had no records of her parents or past. They wanted to put her in an orphanage, but she clenched to my side. No, I want to stay with him. He fed me, and he was nice to me. This poor girl acts like she never knew an act of kindness a day in her life. I didn't know how to take care of a child, but something akin to guilt came washing over me. The next day consisted of getting inspected, and ultimately being deemed parent certified when they found out I had a good work-from-home job. Lilith, who I now call Lily, took to the house immediately. She liked looking in the fish tank of my aquarium. She was excited to have her own bedroom, and she loved running out in the yard. One thing about her I noticed is that the girl eats like there is no tomorrow. Oddly enough, she wasn't skin and bones when I met her, but she doesn't even have a trace of fat you would expect most kids her age to have. She looked like a mini adult. After eating three sandwiches and a bowl of ramen, she went to take a nap. I still haven't totally adjusted to having another living being other than fish and plants in the house. But she brought nice energy, and her always being hungry reminded me to eat something myself. I made a note to do something soon, otherwise she was going to bankrupt my grocery bill. I decided to take her out on a walk around the park area, hoping she would get tired and sleep easy tonight. To this day, I regret doing this. On the walking path, a deer walked in front of us. What is that? Have you not seen a deer before? Is it edible? Yes, actually, though I don't eat them. Lily then walked up, even though I told her it might be dangerous. I then watched in horror as she transformed into something not human. A horizontal line formed on her stomach that opened to a large mouth filled with rows and rows of razor-sharp teeth. Black corvid-like wings protruded from her back and a dark circle dripping some kind of black ooze formed over her head. A large tongue, like the tentacle of a squid, wrapped around the deer and pulled it in. Blood splattered, and bone crushed, as she chowed on the deer like it was a candy bar. Then, like nothing happened, 
she turned back into her human form. That was delicious, I heard her say, having no reaction myself except trying not to faint from the gruesome horror I had witnessed. We should go home, Dad. You don't look so good. From that point on, I was afraid. Feeding her felt more like I was making an offering to a malevolent deity. And one night, I woke up at 3am, to which my blood ran cold when I saw her at the foot of my bed. Dad, I'm hungry. I got up and made her two ham sandwiches. To avoid losing all my food in three days and keeping my bill down, I had to resort to more drastic measures. We would go on walks in the woods, where we would go deer hunting, and I would let her eat her fill before returning home. On days when we couldn't find deer, I would take her to the rancher when I knew the farmer wasn't home, and let her eat a whole cow. With the mess that got left behind, they always rule it up to an animal attack. The thing that got me the most is that when she's not acting like a voracious monster, she was the happiest little girl in the world. She loved having her hair brushed, making daisy chains, and I even bought a switch so we could play Super Smash Brothers together. I really enjoyed having her around. Maybe because I was too lonely before. One evening, we went on a night walk in town, and we were stopped on the sidewalk. One man was in front of us with a crowbar. Well, well, look at that. He then had an accomplice with a switchblade behind us. Make this easy on yourself, pal, and leave the girl. I was once again afraid, not just of the men, but of something happening to Lily. I didn't notice when one of the men walked up to me and whacked my knee with a crowbar. Dad! I heard Lily yell as blood rang through my ears and pain shot through my knee. He grabbed her by the arm, and she transformed. What the hell? I heard the man yell as she coiled her tongue around his leg and dragged him into her maw like he was livestock. His friend tried to run for it, but she devoured him as well. His screams must have lit up the silent night ambience. But I was in too much pain. My world was spinning, my hearing was muffled, and my vision was blurring. Finally, I came out of it long enough to pull my phone out of my pocket and call an ambulance. Sweetie, if the cops ask you what happened, or anyone asks, I was hit by a speeding car. She nodded, and moments later the ambulance arrived to take me to the hospital. After getting a cast and some crutches, I was allowed to return home. I'm glad my job was working from home, so I didn't have to worry about a babysitter. And I was going to homeschool her when the season started. I told her never to transform in front of other people, and to never eat another human being again. She agreed to all of it. One night, I walked outside and saw her staring at the sky. Hey, sweet pea, what are you looking at? What are those lights in the sky? Those are stars, sweetie. They look delicious. I hope one day I can go up there and eat every last star. 
I know you will one day, sweetie. I'm still terrified of her. And yeah, I know I live with a monster. But when you love someone, you look past the flaws. She gave me something to work hard for. And I love her. And she loves me. I think. Or at least, I hope. Thank <laughs> you.